Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Since no one came here to hear me, we will get through with this quickly. <laughs> I am Cato Johnson. I'm vice chair of the board of trustees and a member of the board athletic committee. And it is my pleasure to welcome you here today. And on behalf of the board of trustees and also uh, the advisors who work with the athletic director, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. I would like to read a statement from my president, Dr. M. David Rudd, who is in California, and this is his statement. Our athletic director, Larry Beach, did an exceptional job directing this search. He identified the needs of our program, along with the characteristics and experience of the individual needed to help this program take the next big step in this remarkable trajectory. I want to say thank you to Laird and to the search committee members of the thorough and thoughtful national search and exceptional individuals identified. He just happened to be a mentor. That's not unusual for a national rank program. That is, the internal intent, the internal talent already here would be at the level necessary to move the program forward. Congratulations, Coach Silverfield. He's unique and a passionate talent. His expectations for this program are to compete at the highest level, and I am confident that he will build on a well-established foundation to help us take another step forward for Tiger football. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to introduce our athletic director, I want to thank Cato, and I want to thank uh, President Rudd and, and uh, several folks that were really surrounding me through this process and advising and supporting me as, as we move forward. Uh, first of all, a few of our trustees, in addition to Mr. Johnson, uh, Dave North, Brad Martin, and Alan Graff were instrumental for the process. Uh, my, uh, my new friend and representative of the Board of Visitors, Mike Bruns. Um, uh, Dr. K.B. Turner, the chair of our faculty athletic committee. Thank you, K.B. And uh, I had several former players, um, well, I shouldn't say several, a few former players that uh, advised me a little bit throughout the process. And one of the things that uh, I realized early on is after being here just 10 weeks on the job, that I really needed some folks to help me see and understand and really know what Memphis football was about and what this culture represented. So having some former players involved was, and advising me was nice. Um, especially nice was uh, Reed Hedgepeth. So Reed, I, uh, I really want to make a special rec uh, recognition to you and thank you for being with me throughout the whole process. Uh, Reed's a former player. He's also uh, obviously a leader in our community and he was uh, absolutely fantastic throughout. So thank you, Reed. I want to thank our administrative team, uh, particularly Jeff Crane. Um, uh, we had a lot of folks do a lot of work, but Jeff, you were uh, my right hand man, man and uh, strength throughout the process. Thank you for all your work. Um, and then I want to uh, tell you just a little bit about Ryan. Uh, you will have the, uh, the release and all the details. I won't give you all the specific highlights, uh, but I do want, uh, first of all, I'm, gonna, I'm sure he's going to recognize his wife, Mariana, here uh, momentarily, but uh, Mariana, if you could uh, stand and, and say hello to the group. to meet Max. I believe Max was with you on the plane today coming back, so glad you could uh, both be in town. Um, you know, we all know that uh, Ryan's been a great offensive line coach, uh, a great associate head coach involved in the program in so many ways. He's been up for uh, uh, Coach of the Year finalist for offensive line. His, his uh, offensive lines have performed at a real high level. Uh, but what really stuck out to me is, is Ryan's been coaching almost literally all his life. He really, since high school, so uh, 22 years, is that right? So since you were 18 years old, you've been out on a football field coaching, uh, coaching young men, um, and coaching men that were your age at the time, I'm sure. 
Uh, he's coached at the high school level, the college level, uh, obviously in the NFL, and uh, perhaps most importantly, he's the coach that's been here for the last four years and been a part of this, an integral part of this program, and then the rise to where we are today. And uh, it's, it's so exciting to see you here in front of me. Um, you know, when I stood up here uh, five days ago, seems like a long five days, let me tell you, um, I talked about our department and university leadership working diligently to find and identify the right coach. Um, I talked about how, because of the investments that have been made in this program, and it's important that we continue to make investments in this program, uh, and because of the recent success, and because of the, the, the quality of this community, and how you all have embraced this program, that this would be a, a, a job that would be extremely attractive to national candidates across the country. And I can tell you that that proved to be very true. I'm also very proud and confident of the process we went through. Uh, we were very diligent, uh, had several people around me advising me and leading us all through it. Um, and I will tell you, throughout that process, I, when, before I met with you uh, five days ago, I met with the team. And uh, this was an idea of Mr. Cranes. And uh, he, he suggested that we hand out these note cards to all the players. So we handed them all out, and I asked them to write on there what they were looking for in a head coach, right? Um, and uh, then I had one of our smart young um, administrators put together a word cloud, which I have no idea to do, how to do, but uh, there it is in front of you. And I showed it to the team, and uh, I just want to read some of these things to you. Um, they want, wanted somebody that's real, somebody that's a winner, a competitor with high energy, uh, someone that truly loves and cares for the players. Um, they wanted a Memphian, somebody who was all in, Someone that could uh, continue to provide the discipline and accountability that is really a hallmark of this program, as I've come to find. Someone that's authentic and someone that can continue to take us along where we've been uh, winning championships. Ultimately, I will tell you that uh, when I look for a head coach, and I, I get a lot of questions uh, through this process about do we want an offensive minded coach? Do we want a defensive minded coach? Uh, what are we looking for specifically? And what I wanted is a great leader, and I'm confident we found him. You know, I also want to be very clear, Ryan won this job. He clearly won this job. We went through a process that was fairly grueling, and he won it outright, and not for any other reason. He separated himself by his preparation, by his commitment and passion for this program, and his talent and ability to get it done. I'm confident that Ryan Silverfield is the right man at the right time for Memphis football. That's what we're looking for. That's I'm truly excited to uh, come alongside him and support him and, and all our coaches uh, as we move this program forward. So with that, I ask you to help me welcome the new head football coach for the Memphis Tigers, Ryan Silverfield. Everything he's done for me, 
I'd like to thank Laird Veach, our Director of Athletics, who's a gentleman who I can't wait to stand side by side, <coughs> locked arm in arm, and take this program, this athletic department, to new heights. I'd like to thank Jeff Crane for his work. I look forward to working alongside him as well. Reed Hedgepeth, thank you. You're a true Memphian. Loves this program, loves this city. Thank you. I'm honored to call you a friend. Brad Martin, truly a gentleman, a good hearted soul. I'm grateful also has been along with me along this journey. And can't wait for many more years to having Brad and I corner. Dave North, who's not here today, Dave's been a wonderful friend. Truly grateful for his friendship and everything he's done. Alan Graff, another gentleman that's been so wonderful to me. Ed Branowitz, a dear old friend who's been by my side this whole time, who's seen the ups and downs of my coaching career. There are so many of you out there today, I wish I could name all your names, but I can look at you right now and know how grateful I am to call you guys friends. Thank you all for your support. Along this way, there's been so many people who have gotten me to this point. Right, when I was 18 years old, as Larry just mentioned, coaching at a high school in Jacksonville, Florida. And then at the age of 20, coaching at Division III school as a D-line coach in the middle of nowhere, Virginia. To having the opportunity to be a head high school coach at a young age, to coaching in the NFL, to finally coming to what place I call home, Memphis. I'm so honored and grateful for all those coaches, all those players along the way. But I'd be doing a disjustice if I didn't thank the current players on this Memphis roster. I think there was slight joy and excitement a few minutes ago when I had the chance to hug most of them, if not all of them. And that's where the joy comes from. To see those young men that will have the opportunity to lead along with the rest of our staff. It's a sense of genuine excitement for me to be their next head football coach. Pure joy. It warms my heart. I'd like to thank the city of Memphis. I'm one of you. Couldn't be here without you guys, your support, the former Tiger players, everybody. So grateful. Again, there's plenty of people that I'm probably leaving out. But last and certainly not least, I got to thank my rock. and downs, wins and losses. I'm proud of her and everything she's done. Thank you. <laughs> I guess they say offensive line coaches shouldn't cry, but I'm a head coach now. <laughs> <laughs> With all that being said, I want you all to know the direction this program is going to be held, it's going to continue to go in the right direction. We're going to do it the right way at all times. I constantly throw out terms like structure, standard accountability. Those are the words I threw out to our players in our team meeting not too long ago. We're going to do it the right way. Everything is going to matter in this program, from academics to how we live socially to what we do in the community and on the football field, it is all going to matter. Every day is just going to be just as important as the last. We will make this city proud. We will make the University of Memphis proud. All of our fans, thank you. We will make you proud. I'm excited about this journey for many, many years to come. I can't wait to get started, even though I feel like I've already gotten started. <laughs> Again, thank you. Honored and humbled and so appreciative to the city of Memphis, the university, to 
to our leg department. Give me your head, football coach. Go Tigers, go. We'll now, take, we'll now take questions for Coach, just from media only, and after the Coach is finished, then Laird will come up for questions. Any questions for Coach? Current players, the fans, 
boosters. I didn't want that to have any play in say in who he was hiring. I wanted to hire the best coach for this program, the right fit for this program. And we looked eye to eye last night. He said, you are the right guy. You are the right fit. Not because of anything else other because of the direction we need to take this program. That gave me a great sense of relief and understanding that we'll continue to do this the right way. So with all that being said, obviously, really, really appreciative. I know I use that word a lot, but I am I'm honored to get that support. It's time to go to work. Hey, Coach, you had multiple opportunities to leave for that position. And why did you stay up there all this time? Yeah, I think in life, it's not always about just having patience. Right? Sometimes it's the ones that work hard and are loyal. Sometimes they don't always get what they want. In this case, I was loyal to a program. I was loyal to the city. And it worked out in my favor. So it's kind of a message to all those people that have been working really hard at things in life and, and are loyal and have a dream that they want to accomplish. And people believe it will keep working. It will come true. And the ability to have those blessed with so many other opportunities I truly didn't wait around him because this is the one I always wanted. This is the job I always wanted. And I love this. You know, I mentioned this on Sunday, right? If you love Memphis, it freaking loves you back. <laughs> <laughs> and the support of this city, second to none. And so I'm grateful, we are grateful to be here in Memphis for the support of the city. And we will make you proud in everything we do. Coach, once you get to that point, this would come to your job for you as an athlete guy here. You always kind of hide it in the city. Great question. I, truth be told, I never really thought of being the head coach of Memphis prior to coming here. And I think once you become intertwined with the city, its culture, the people, the friends I've made along the way, the relationships that are built, I didn't want those to go away. I wanted to be here. And so, excuse me, over the years, even after a few months of being here, I realized how special this place was, how special our leaders are at this school. There's a great sense of pride in being a Memphian. We wear 901 on our sleeves and on our heart. And the way the support from this university, from this athletic department, from the leadership top down, that's when I realized this was a dream job. I never wanted to let it go. It led me here today, and I'm so damn honored. What are things you'll take from Coach Norvell that you can use, and who are some of the other guys in your past that will make you who you be as a coach? Yeah, great. You know, I did not do my due diligence by thanking Coach Norvell. I was wrong for that. And so Mike Norvell gave me this opportunity. So let it be known that I am so thankful for my Lord up. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here. His friendship, his trust, his guidance, his leadership, I will value to the day I die. Truly a man that did the right way. Not just on the field or in the X's and O's, but did the right way. Respected by his peers, respected by the city, respected by the fans and the players. I am thankful to Mike Norvell. I'll ever, forever be indebted to him for this opportunity. Learned a lot. We talk about the culture of a place. He helped build this culture. And I learned that there's a right way to do things. And so for that, those things will continue. We will continue to build our culture stronger and do things at a high level. There's a lot of other coaches. Coach Corky Rogers, a guy that's a Hall of Fame at Florida. High School Association. Give him a lot of credit. Guys like George O'Leary along the way, right? Marty Fabret, the head coach at Division Three School, gave me my first full-time job. I'm grateful for Brad Childress, Leslie Frazier. Mark Sussman, athletic director that hired a 23-year-old that had no idea what he was doing a long time ago in Savannah, Georgia. You know, grateful for all those people. And that's what led me here. And in this coaching profession, learn from everybody. I learned a lot from our assistants that have been here at Memphis since I've been here. And I will continue to learn. 
Speaking of that, the assistant question, that's what everybody wants to know about on the bull. What, how do those negotiations go, and, and how can you hit the ground running? Sure. As things stand right now, um, the assistants that are currently in place will coach with us through the bowl game. Um, the Cotton Bowl is a big game. We're excited about it. And um, that's all I can say on that. Uh, we've got a great group of assistants. Obviously, you don't win the many amount of games we've won here uh, without having a great staff, our support staff, um, from everybody in this room, our academic support, Sherry Schwartz, who's been my sidekick, who's can't wait to continue to work with her. Those type of people, they're the ones that make the wins occur on the field. And, uh, but our assistant coaches will coach with us through the whole game, and then we'll figure it out from there. But right now, I'm grateful that they're by our side as well. Coach, you talked about all the different stops you've had along the way. Is there ever a point that you doubted a day like this that it would be possible? Yeah, I, in this profession, <laughs> there's some hard days. Look, everybody in this room has had some hard days. And I certainly don't say or claim to have it to say that I've had a hard life. I've been blessed. But there's been some days when Maybe you're out of the job, or you feel like you can't score any points. You say, man, what am I doing? There's times in my career where I've made $5,000 a year. I've slept on the cot, where I couldn't get a phone calls returned. Um, so you sit there, but you always look in the mirror and say, you're built for this. <laughs> if you per persevere, and you believe, and other people believe in you, you can accomplish anything. And I've always said this, if you keep swinging that ax, good things will come. And I'll take that same approach here every single day. We're going to swing. We're going to keep swinging. We're going to keep swinging. We're going to have a lot of success in everything we do here because of that. What did these next few days look like for you, especially with Carlos signing for next week? Yeah, um, you know, I had wonderful glad the opportunity to go and be with you today. Right? We'll, we'll have a practice starting on Sunday, <coughs> team banquet Sunday night, and then we presume practice for the Econ Bowl this week. Um, we've got official visitors here this weekend, so right when we're done here, I've got a Put on my recruiting hat. Let's go. Uh, so I'll spend the weekend with recruits, um, and then practice on Sunday with our current players. In the meantime, at some point, try to study a little Penn State film, and maybe find a, an hour or two for a nap. So that's how I foresee my next few days. I'll we'll take one or two more questions. Anyone? Yes, John. Can you tell me when you were interviewed, and what was that like walking in the interview? Was it? Uh, I interviewed not too distant, not too distant past, and uh, to be honest with you, when I walked in that interview room with the men on the search committee, there was a sense of relief because I got a chance to sit down and finally tell my story, share with them my vision for this program. And that's the easy part. Really, everyone said, "Oh, you must prepare. You must prepare for, prepare for your interview." Well, it's been a lifetime of preparation. In the four years here in Memphis, I've been understanding for the culture and everything we do here. But I didn't sit up one night and there worried about how it act. The biggest piece of advice every coach gave me was just be yourself. And I'm fortunate that those people in that interview room liked what they saw across the way and uh, it worked out. But at the end of the day, just like today, didn't come up here with any note cards, really didn't think about it. All I can think about is the next step in my job, this opportunity that I've been invited to keep working, and keep chopping away. If you could, for, I guess, I'm not saying, what does a Ryan Silver Field program look like? Well, we, this, is, this was my program, so this is now your program, but what do you want to figure out what You know, it's going to be a program that we set an environment with high standards where every single day the players come into a positive environment when they leave here, they're better off for being in our program. And that means that everything matters from academics, like I said earlier, to the community, to the way we train, to the way we respect each other, to the way we serve each other, to the way we do every single thing that will matter, right? to the way we talk to each other, to the way we study film, the way we respect women, to the way we travel, to the way we take the field with great excitement, 
fast, physical, the mindset to go out there that no obstacle will get in our way. That's the type of program you'll see with the Ryan Snowfield program. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. upon 
making sure we made the right decision for the right reasons, that I essentially removed myself from any social media or, or media throughout the process. I didn't even look at it. What I did is I had uh, someone on our staff that would monitor it for me, and if there was something really critical uh, or something I really needed to understand or try to address, that he would share it with me. But otherwise, I didn't want to be I didn't want to be skewed or influenced by any of that. Uh, whether so, I, I understand he's a, a remarkably popular candidate, and I'm, I'm thrilled for that. Um, and, and frankly, it, it doesn't often sort of line up that way, where you have who the fans want, who the team wants, and he's also truly the best candidate for the job. Um, and, I'm, and I'm so so happy that it, that it lined up that well for, for all of us. Well, thank you, Larry. Thank you all for coming. Thank Go you Tigers. All.